Hey guys, it's Tomato Tuesday. Do you love the taste of homegrown tomatoes but don't have any space in ground to grow them? Following a few basic steps and employing a couple of tricks, you can grow any type of tomato in a container. Stick around. I'm Brian with California Garden TV, and if you're looking to join a gardening community that offers tips, tricks, and support to grow your own organic fruits and vegetables and become a little more self-sufficient along the way, you're in the right place. Start now by hitting subscribe and clicking the bell so you're notified every time we upload a video. Let's get growing. In this video, I'm gonna go over everything you need to know to grow any type of tomato in a pot, or in my situation, a five gallon bucket. So maybe you have limited space, maybe you live in an apartment and just have a patio or a balcony and no in-ground place for planting, it's okay. You still want that homegrown flavor of a homegrown tomato because let's face it, store-bought tomatoes shouldn't even be called tomatoes. Thumbs up for the video if you agree. For the most part, tomatoes in pots need the same things that tomatoes in ground or in raised beds need. The only difference is in a pot, they're very limited on the space they have for the roots to be able to find those things. Not to mention pots dry out quicker than in the, in the ground and the nutrients will leach out the bottom uh, every time you water. And so we have to come up with a few tweaks to make sure that we can offer tomatoes an environment in a pot where they can thrive. So let's go through the planting process together and along the way I'll go over a couple of tips and tricks to help you avoid the most common problems. For most containers, the minimum size pot you want is five gallons. And so this five gallon bucket is actually perfect. Now, a word on plastics. There are some types of plastic that will leach into the soil that's in the bucket or the pot. And so I'm gonna put a link down below to a website that talks about the different kind of plastics that you can use and ones to avoid. Now for this one, I know it's safe because there's a little insignia on the bottom and you're gonna find this on most plastics and it's got a little circle, almost like the recycle sign with arrows going around. And then there's gonna be a number in that circle or triangle. In this case, this one is two and that lets me know that this is a plastic that is safe to use for growing food. And you can sometimes get free buckets at uh, restaurants, and grocery stores they you know they get things shipped to them like pickles and frostings and all kinds of stuff kinds of stuff like that and they're probably more than willing to give you those buckets for free rather than throw them away another little tip is uh, not to use terracotta pots terracotta is very porous and it dries out way too quickly for tomatoes who really need a nice moist root run all the time you also want to make sure that you have lots of holes drilled in the bottom. I used a fourth of an inch drill bit and put quite a few. Tomatoes are really big babies when it comes to moisture. They need a lot of it. So we really need to treat them like a baby. And that starts with a diaper. Well, not a diaper, but what's in it. Not that. Inside the diaper are water absorbing polymers that are not toxic. They hold hundreds of times their weight in water and will store moisture between waterings for the plant to use. And you can mix these pre-moistened polymers into the pre-moistened potting mix. Speaking of potting mix, we're going to use a potting mix that is well draining, preferably organic, and we're going to fill the bucket about a third of the way up. So once we have the pot, uh, a third of the way full, we need to start thinking about the nutrients that the tomato needs in order to produce a lot of um, nice, big, juicy fruit. There are two important minerals that are usually plentiful when planting in the ground, but in pots, we need to supplement those. One of the big problems we want to avoid is blossom and rot. This is caused by a lack of calcium in the plant. In the ground, there's usually enough calcium, and if you're growing in the ground and get blossom end rot, it's probably due to poor watering rather than a lack of calcium in the soil. There could be a ton of calcium in the soil, but if the plant doesn't have the water to pull it out of the soil and into its root systems and into the plant, it's going to get blossom end rot. 
but in a pot, we need to add that calcium. Now there's a ton of things that I've heard that you can add, eggshells crushed up, Tums, milk. Um, I actually use gypsum. I use a good handful of gypsum at planting time and just mix it into the soil. Let me know down in the comments what you guys use for calcium. If you do supplement calcium, um, I'd like to know all the different ideas there are out there. Tomatoes also require a good amount of magnesium for really good fruiting. Like calcium, it's usually plentiful in the ground, but in pots we can use Epsom salts. One tablespoon at planting time mixed under the root zone. I think one of the most important ingredients we can use in this pot is rock phosphate. Now rock phosphate is a really good source of phosphorus and that is the middle number on the fertilizer packet and that's great for root development and uh, flowers and obviously after flowers comes the tomatoes themselves. Now I like rock phosphate especially in pots because it is very slow to um, absorb so it provides a nice long range source of slow phosphorus and also in pots because it's not just going to dissolve and leach right out the bottom of the pot. Unlike the Epsom salts, we aren't going to mix this in. We're going to put the handful in the bottom of the planting hole and put the tomato roots right on top of it. So when the roots start to grow, they can get right in there and take advantage of that phosphorus right away. It's also very slow release, like I said, so it's not going to burn the roots. Speaking of roots, has a really great root structure. It's definitely ready to go into uh, the hole. Now, I don't have to tease the roots out at all because they're not winding around. It's the perfect time. So I'm gonna put it right down in the hole, right on top of the uh, rock phosphate, fill in around it. And we're gonna fill in this pot now up to, I'm gonna take off these two leaves and we're going to fill up the, uh, the pot right to where those leaves come out of the stem. And all that stem we're burying now is going to grow roots and help us establish a really, really strong plant. Your tomatoes are going to want at least six hours of sun per day. And the more sun they get, the more tomatoes they're going to produce. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the most crucial thing about growing tomatoes in pots is the moisture level, keeping the moisture pretty consistent. Now a drip system is going to help, the polymers are going to help, but you still need to check on these daily probably depending on your climate, especially in the heat of the summer. And the top of the ground might look dry, but that doesn't mean that underneath is dry. And so you want to just use the finger test. Stick your finger in two to three inches. If you feel moisture, you're good. If it's dry, it needs to be watered. So depending on your climate and even where they are in your garden and how much sun they get, the watering requirements are going to be different for everybody. So it's pretty impossible for me to give like a strict watering schedule, but the finger method works for everyone. So if you get a really hot and especially a hot dry summer, you might want to keep some 30 to 50% shade cloth on hand and in the heat of the day, just go out there and uh, cover the plants with the shade cloth. That's it. Everything you need to know to get your tomato plants planted in a pot and off to a healthy start. In the coming weeks, I'm going to be doing more videos on Tomato Tuesdays about uh, pruning and staking, fertilizing, and pest and disease control. And I'm going to be covering both in-ground plants and container-grown plants. So make sure you have the bell icon hit and you're subscribed so you get notifications when those come out. If you guys have learned anything, Give the video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you on Friday.